Blog Talk Radio. Another episode of Two Lit Tuesdays right here on Indie Fire with your girl Nakia. Yo, I'm super excited. I'm looking at my switchboard. It is crazy. Yo, um, normally there would be somebody else that's gonna operate, you know, the dashboard, the switchboard. Y'all might mess some shit up tonight. I'm gonna do my best to make sure that I got everybody where they need to be and you know, we can we can rock this episode out. As long as I got my guest where she needs to be, I'm good to go, right? <laughs> All right. Yo, let me just let me let me recap last night really quickly, give you these um B T award winners like I said I was gonna do, and then I wanna jump right into this interview because I'm excited to have our our guest here this evening, yo, our coast to coast live fifth place winner. Y'all heard about that? Yes, I talked about it briefly last night. So I'm super excited to have her here with me. I'm talking about Diamond the Diva. Yes. Y'all heard Pop Out? I played it last night. It's in rotation. You should have heard it. Let me let me quickly recap last night. Let me before I get ahead of myself. All right, so New Music Mondays. Whoa, whoa. I gotta back up. Dang, gotta back up, right? Back up. All right. So last week, all right, so let's go to Tuesday. Last Tuesday we had Chicago Fancy. Rajan here, we debuted new music from her. Yo, when I tell you, she sat on this music for five to six years. Oh, she did a Kanye on us, right? She perfected this music. Yo, she wanted to make sure before she released it to her listening audience that it was the greatest, right? And when I say she she did it for us, it was Sugar, she released, and Swagger Jack. Both came out last Tuesday, the 12th. And we debuted them both right here on Two Lit Tuesdays. So make sure you check them out. They're both available on all digital platforms. That's Rajan, R-E-J-A-N. Yes, Chicago Femsy. Then on Thursday, yo, we have my boo. Yo, I keep sliding his DM, yo. <laughs> yo, he about to be my boo for real. He was here, Sorrell Lamont Williams, um, musical composer, and what is he, producer, keyboardist for Says Dying and Jazz Band out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Uh, he was here, um, you know, enlightening us on everything that it takes to go into um, the creation of a total piece of music. You know what I'm saying? Not just being able to um, write, you know, being a songwriter is one thing, but just the total composition from the keys to, you know, the bass player to, um, the the what else the lead player you know what I'm saying to the um the percussionist like he does all of that like my brain can't even keep up with having to just write the song but all of that yeah so he was here Thursday with us and and that was a very lively interview and then on Saturday we had the founder of um Coco Vida Coquito out of the Bronx Mr. Sean Wilson yes was here with us yo it's still in effect. If you mentioned Indie Fire, uh, for in-state purchases, you'll receive $5 off of two bottles or more. You know the holidays are coming up, all right? Y'all don't want that eggnog. You need to get on the Coquito, all right? Uh, for out-of-state purchases, free shipping. And then if you're doing a Friendsgiving, he'll come out and do a free sampling of all of his flavors, all right? He's got original. He got um, pina colada, uh, cookies and cream, red velvet. And there's like two other flavors. If you're vegan, soy free, he got that for you. Your kids want to get on it, he got virgin. Yo, he got it all. All right, so just look up Coco Vida Coquito on Instagram, Facebook, and he'll hook you up. 
just remember, you got to mention Indie Fire, all right? And then last night, back here on New Music Mondays, we dropped some crazy new music from Russia, yes, from the UK, uh, Cryptic, yes, Grime Artist, Hack. Um, who else we have? Ooh, ooh, Cape Town, South Africa, yes, Mark Hayes. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, oh, oh, yes, Diamond and Diva was in the mix last night. Yes, who else? Hmm, hmm, tell you what, listen, just go back and listen. All right, New Music Mondays plays every Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here. Um, for submissions, you can email Monica at info at indiefireradio.com in the subject line, New Music Mondays. And remember, all genres are accepted. All right, and remember. <clears throat> we did talk about those uh, BET Soul Train Music Awards. Again, I haven't had the opportunity to watch it. I did watch Yolanda Adams' performance, because I did talk about her briefly, right? Oh, my gosh. Yo, first of all, the tuxedo she had on. Like, I want to wear that when I get married next year. Got to find a man first. But I'm going to wear that tuxedo. You hear me? I'm going to wear that tuxedo. Yes. But the performance was amazing oh my gosh amazing but here are the winners as promised very quickly best new artist summer walker very deserving very deserving soul train certified awards trevor jackson Yo, who that y'all know who that is I, I don't know who that is um best gospel inspirational awards into kirk franklin y'all see his wife's hair who laid rhythm and bars award went to cardi b for money um, best R and B female artist went to her. Yo, she she had I could see her eyes last night. You 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 see you see that? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, best R and B soul male artist went to Khalid. Uh, album mixtape of the year went to Cause I Love You Lizzo. Song of the year no guidance. Chris Brown featuring Drake. Okay. What's the song got to be like for a certain amount of time for it to, never mind. All right, the Aspen and Simpson Songwriters Award went to Brown Skin Girl, written by, y'all know who wrote because it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people, but that was Brown Skin Girl. Best, uh, best Dance Performance went to Chris Brown featuring Drake, uh, No Guidance. Video of the Year went to Lizzo for Juice. And the Best Collaboration Performance went to Chris Brown featuring Drake. No guidance. That was all. That so that was a short list. So what they do, like it's mostly performances, all right? Seems like I miss this every year. Maybe there's a reason why. I don't know. But there you go. Those are the winners of the two thousand nineteen uh B E T Soul Train uh awards. Yeah. All right. Maybe I don't wanna watch it. <sighs> so what are we all here for tonight? <laughs> you just tuning in, you're live on two big Tuesdays with your girl Nakia on Indie Fire. Uh, tonight, my special guest is singer and songwriter, uh, Diamond the Diva. She's truly the female version of a hustler. I ain't said her bio good. Diamond the Quay, professionally known as Diamond the Diva, is an 18-year-old melodic rapper, singer, and songwriter, born and raised in New York. Diamond effectively pursues her music career while remaining in college and working. She has done work in retail, child care, and even politics, but always had her mind on the music. While working and going to school, Diamond uses the knowledge and profits she gains wisely by investing in herself and her music and career. With inspirations such as Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Christina Aguilera, Nicki Minaj, Ashanti, Rihanna, A Boogie with the Hoodie, Diamond is able to create and share music for her audience to gain a personal connection with her, cope with daily struggles, and simply enjoy life to the fullest. Diamond is growing. Diamond is a growing force to be reckoned with. With only a couple of months of professionally in the music industry, wow, <laughs> Diamond has grown as an artist. Her vibrant, enthusiastic attitude and skill set helps towards her great ongoing network. She has performed at Black Thorn 51, Sea Lounge, and college events such as Hofstra University and Pace University. And y'all can add, you know, Coast to Coast Live in there as well. She has also been featured in Blaze Magazine. With her two recently released singles, Pop Out 
and look me in the eyes, streaming on several major platforms, Diamond hopes to successfully represent her generation as a female in the hip-hop music industry in a new light. Diamond can be followed on Instagram and Twitter at Diamond Ladiva, and also follow her on her journey to success on her YouTube channel, Diamond the Diva. Indie Fire listening audience, I present to you this evening my very, very special guest, singer and songwriter, Diamond the Diva. <laughs> Hey. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm so good. I just got back from class right now. <laughs> oh man. Yo, how is it how is it being I'm I'm gonna go ahead and put it out there because I like to speak things into existence. So how is it being a a college student and this this big superstar? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just literally, literally got off stage, you know, Sunday night, and then you had class, like, Monday. So, how is it being this big performer now? Honestly, I like that you're speaking things into existence, though. But, <laughs> honestly, for me, it's not that hard because this is something I always wanted to do. So, I make sure to plan accordingly. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes it does take a little bit, a little toll on me. Like, like on Monday, I didn't really, I didn't go to my classes this one day because I was just so tired. But all the other times <laughs> I go to my classes, I go, I go to my classes after a performance and coming home at 2 a.m. in the morning. Like, is it something you have to do if you really want to do it? I have a daughter that's a freshman in college, so I hope she's not listening. I don't want her to hear that part right there. Like, you got no excuse, you know what I'm saying? You, you you don't have no reason that you shouldn't be going to class, you know? I want right, to backtrack. Right, because you pay for it. I, I, I want to backtrack and, and start from the very beginning. Do you come from a musical background? In a way, I do. Um, I have family in the industry, but I wasn't 100% raised around them. Most of my creative outlook on life came from people who are involved in music like my mom and my dad and the family around me like singing and and bringing music around me but nobody like I wasn't like raised into the music industry you know so you don't have that um like you know I used to sing in the choir every Sunday morning type of oh um I used to sing everywhere. Um, <laughs> in elementary school, I was very um, active in pretty much all clubs. I was in tennis for a while. Uh, that didn't last long. Uh, I did everything pretty much. I was very – I really explored my creative um, side of me, you know. But it wasn't until middle school where I started getting involved in musicals um, and I did the sound of music. I wasn't a mm. main I wasn't a main lead in the sound of music, but it was cool. <laughs> I was an extra, but it was okay because I liked um the process of creating you know the whole theater and film and everything. It's just so beautiful, especially when you're working with a team of people that's also as creative as you, right. Right, there's nothing then I wrong got with being in high school. That's how you get experience. That's how you gain exposure, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then after middle school, I got into LaGuardia High School, you know, for the performing arts. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when I got to learn more about things I didn't know about music. Like, I, that's where I learned about classical music and composition and everything like that, and I didn't know anything about that prior, you know? So, yeah. And then now we're here where I'm exploring things myself. So what are you in What are you in college for? Right now I'm in college for business. I, may, I concentrate in um, marketing with a minor in corporate communications. 
How important for you, since you mentioned business, how important for you, not only is it um, to write your songs, but also to learn the business side of the music industry? Well, nowadays it's very, very important to know the (laughs) business side of the industry, whether um, it's as the artist or from the record label or even knowing the business behind radios, you know, like that's the stuff I learned in school today. So, one, it's interesting to me, and two, it's going to help me as an artist so, you know, I can hold my own. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, a lot of people are independent artists, but don't know the business aspect behind it to uphold the independent artist status or even just get further in the industry without getting hurt in the industry. You 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 learned that in the very beginning. There are some seasoned artists that still haven't acquired, you know, that knowledge yet. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that they've been in the industry for so long, trying to now backtrack and understand those concepts and why they are so important. Um, it's a struggle for them. You know, they've been burnt mm-hmm. on both ends now. So for them to now, you know, try to grasp all of that that's being thrown at them, it's hard because the industry, it changes minute by minute. I know when I first came Every into it, changes. all of the information that was being fed to me, I thought, this is too much. Like, I can't get all of this, <laughs> you know? At, at that time, it, you know, it could have been like, you know, every two days, you know, all right, you got to get this now, you got to get that. And then now it's like, no, every hour there's something new you got to learn, but you got to stay on top of that stuff, you know? And mm-hmm. and not only as an artist, um, but I'm an A and R. So uh, as an A and R for my artists, I gotta stay on top of that for them. So it is important that the artists just don't sit on the fact that I can sing a song or I can write a song. You know, I gotta know every part of this industry. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I exactly. can't rely, I can't rely on nobody else to to um, handle my career for me. I gotta be able to know how to handle this career as well. So I'm glad that you're getting this in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And that's why people, that that's one of my you. main goals with my YouTube channel. That's awesome. Thank you. What's, <laughs> what's, a, uh, what's your songwriting process like? Do you um, have your lyrics first and then, you know, you search for the beat or do you fill the beat first and then you write to that? Mainly, it's it's a combination of both. Sometimes lyrics will just pop up in my head, and I'll write it real quick. And then when I get home, I'll extend it to a beat if I could find one. If not, I'll continue writing it. Um, a lot of the times, though, it's just me freestyling on a beat, like humming, just trying to get a melody, and then lyrics come after that. That's a lot of the time how I do it, yeah. Do you have and and I um I've had a lot of younger artists on the show lately, and so they have different methods that they prefer to keep to store their lyrics. <laughs> Some have been kind of mm-hmm. funny. Do you have a notebook that you write in? Do you record on the phone? I mean, everything kept in your head. I don't know who who could do that all the time. Um, <laughs> what, what's your preferred method? of keeping your lyrics? Well, um, I do a lot of voice recordings of my lyrics. I also have a lot, a lot of notebooks. It's kind of hard to keep track of all my notebooks, (laughs) but I have a lot of um, notes on my computer too, but one problem with that is like one of my computers just broke, and so Mm -hmm. I have a whole bunch of songs on there that I just can't get out now. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. So that's one of my problems, but I I have a lot of um, notebooks. Yeah, I keep a lot of notebooks and voice recordings. I want to open up the line now because you you have a lot of fans on. I still love tonight, so I just want to open. <laughs> that's all my friends. I just want to open the line up. I do want to open up the line just in case they want to you know show some love. They want to shout you out. They got questions for mm-hmm. you. Uh, Typically, I would throw the area code out, but uh, everybody seems to be calling, you know, from the same area code. So that's not going to help you. <laughs> so I'm just going to open up the line. 
<laughs> You're All live right. on uh, Indie Fire with Nakia and Diamond the Diva. Who do we have on the line? Grandma. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Grandma. How you hey, doing? Grandma. <laughs> okay. How you doing? I'm so proud of you, Diamond. Thank you, Grandma. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. I lost the spot where it says to add a comment. That's why I didn't add a comment. Oh, oh Grandma. <laughs> How you doing, well, Grandma? I'm good. I'm loving you. I'm loving you more. Where are you calling from? From Harlem, New York. Yes, Harlem. ma'am. That's what's up. <laughs> my grandma was she came to my coast to coast performance. Mhm. Yes. Really? Yes. Yes, I she did. She was that. very lit. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a was nice dancing. show. Yeah, I know you're very you proud of your that. granddaughter. Oh yes, I am. I was surprised now, are you at I was surprised at her performance because she used to be this quiet little girl. <laughs> my baby, <laughs> Diana Ross said, I'm coming out, and my baby came out. Oh, she sounds just like my grandmother. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, are you Christina's mother? Excuse me? Diamond, is this your mother's mother? Yes. yes. Oh, wow. You have a beautiful daughter, inside and out. Yeah, I, um, all of them are. The daughters, the son, one son, four daughters, a bunch of grandkids. And they all, they all just good and smart. That's they awesome. Are. You're very blessed. You're very blessed. Mm-hmm. I am. To have all of them, it's amazing. <laughs> well, so thank I'm you so much for calling in. I want you yeah, to thank you, Grandma. <laughs> I know I'm gonna let another caller in because your aunt Belinda is on too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, can I connect with her? <laughs> you okay, have a good thank night. You. you too. You're welcome. <laughs> Oh my God! He told you this right, friends me, and family. Let me see, let me see if this Belinda right here. <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of support from my friends and family. I appreciate it. Hey, them. hey! You're live with yes. two Tuesdays on Indie Fire with Nakia and Diamond the Diva. Who do we have on the line? This is the auntie. <laughs> <laughs> which, which auntie is this? Belinda. This is Auntie Belinda. See, I told you. I told you we have Belinda. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Auntie. How are you doing? Uh, Hi, my baby. Um, I How was are you so doing? Proud of my, I'm great. I'm about to head out for work, but I wanted to call in. I'm so proud of my baby. <laughs> Thank and you. you did such a great job. And I think it was LaGuardia that got you out of your shell. Thank you. You think? Hmm. That that is that is awesome. When you have the love and support of your family, um, I, I think that is that is so important. Um, not not only in the industry, but for our youth in general. Um, when they can have the love and support of their family, that means so much, um, especially in the world that we live in today. Um, mm-hmm. you know, to know that their family can back them in whatever that they decide to do. Um, and for your grandmother to be there and support you Sunday, I know that meant the world to you because there's so many children, you know, who, who, who don't have what apparently you have. So I know you guys are very proud of her. Thank you so much for calling in this evening. Absolutely. Thank you, Auntie. You're welcome. Love you, baby. Love you, too. You have a good night at work. Good night. (laughs) All right, let me see. Let me see who this is right here. (laughs) 
I'm very appreciative of my friends and my family so, so, so much. Like, they don't even understand. <laughs> All right. You are live on Two Lit Tuesdays right here on Episaya with Nakia and Diamond the Diva. Who do we have on the line? Can you hear me? Oh, I can. Hi, this is Shashina. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> you act like you know her. You know her? <laughs> I don't know this woman. <laughs> you don't know her? <laughs> no, that's my Yo, mother. Your whole family. Your whole family been up here. I talked to your mother. <laughs> you know my whole I family because you I'm... are family now. I was wasn't going to say anything. I was going to let her do her thing. I said, you know, my mom got on, my sister got on. Let me show some time and some love. So (laughs) I said, let me talk. But I'm proud of you, Diamond. I'm happy that I was able to connect with Nakia and to have the opportunity to get you on this show. And I didn't even know that she played the shit song yesterday because we were so out of it. <laughs> well, I'm so proud of you. And like Mommy said, um, Belinda said, you know, when she went to LaGuardia, she was exposed to a lot of different music. Um, she's singing in Spanish, Italian. I don't even know the other languages. And <laughs> she was performing in concerts. Like she had a lot of training in, from LaGuardia. And on her own, and I also exposed her to a lot of people in the industry. So she got a lot of advice and a lot of feedback, and she took that, and she worked it where she was able to better her craft. And she's not telling you that she's going to school for business because she wants to have her own record, um, record label. But she didn't Come ask on yet. Now. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, sometimes that's what you have to do for your children. Um, I had to do the same thing for my son. He He's in the ninth grade now. Very small private school. As a matter of fact, he's the only ninth grader. They only got three high schoolers. It's that small. Um, but oh, the, wow. the school okay. is focused. Yeah, the school is focused on performing arts. And he has he's blossomed um, in so many ways. Uh, but he has, you know, self-taught you know, how to play the keyboard, um, the guitar, um, you know, and it's just amazing when, you know, you have to step up sometimes and see how unhappy your child is. And she may not have been in that position, but, you know, I had to see that my child was unhappy where he was in public school and he just wasn't Mm -hmm. thriving. Like I felt that he needed, you know, and once I put him in the school, you know, I just, I saw a complete turnaround in him. I saw things you know, his creative side, it, it just opened up. It came out of nowhere. So I completely, right. see, you know, what's coming from, you know, the same thing that Belinda said. I, I, I completely understand, like, the creative juices, like, they just flow. They flow now. So I'm hoping, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, he wants to be um, a music producer. And so uh, one of his teachers is actually um, a stellar award-winning um, composer. You know, and so um, I'm hoping, you know, he stays on the right path. And, you know, the things that your daughter is, uh, I know, um, going to do, you know, he will also be able to do. You know, he wants his own label as well. So, you know, as long as he's got my foot on his neck, um, and I know that you're the same way, Shashina. I know that. Um, I know that, you know, the two of them, they, they can accomplish anything that they set their mind out to do. I know that. So um, sometimes that's what it takes, you know. We yes, as parents exactly. see the bigger vision. You know, we as parents see the bigger vision for our children. So kudos to you. But I, I don't want to, you know, this her interview, you had yours. So I'm going <laughs> to let them come back out. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for calling. Love you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I do wanna I wanna go ahead and jump right into this um this track 
You know, this one I have not had the opportunity to listen to because uh, you got more callers calling in, girl. Um, <laughs> I do want to go ahead. Look, look, no sooner than I said that, <laughs> three more popped up here. But I do want to go ahead and jump into, uh, look, y'all ain't funny. Y'all not funny. Um, look me in the eye. So I haven't listened to this one. So briefly, mm-hmm. you know, before you introduce this one, um, what was going through your mind? You know, what was your mindset when you wrote the lyrics to look me in the eye? Um, well, most of the time when I'm writing my music, um, a lot of my music is inspired from other people's stories, like, around me. And a lot of the time I start with the chorus and my hook first. So when it came to look me in the eyes, I was just thinking about how people, when people lie, they cannot look you in the eyes and tell you this, that, and the other. (laughs) So that's, like, it's me saying, like, for a two-way person, whether it be a boy or a girl, just look me in the eyes and tell me, tell me that you were wrong or tell me this on the other. If you can't look me in the eyes, then you shouldn't have did it or it's not true. Mm-hmm. So if you can relate to that, that is wonderful. But I write mainly about people in my life because I use my music to help them cope. A lot of the time my music I've written, it has been for, like, my family and my friends, and I'll write, like, personal songs for them to help them cope with whatever they're going through. So real-life experiences. Yeah. hmm All right. Here you are on Two Lit Tuesdays, and this was released in September, correct? Yep. All right. Quite a while ago. Look me in the eye. Diamond the Diva. <laughs> We set the price, bitch. You wanna be known in the streets, known as a beast. Thought you was occupied, but you noticed me. Said I'm your little baby, been you loving in peace. But you've been moving funny, but I'm doing OD. Is you that I, you not that I. Is you forgetting I'm the best you ever had? They say they love you, then they go, you wanna try. Look me in the eyes and tell me everything they can. You wanna be known in the streets, 
known as a beast. Thought you was occupied, but you know it isn't me. Said I'm your little baby, bring you love and in peace. But you been moving funny, and now I'm doing no deeds. You got eyes, you not that eyes. Is you forgetting I'm the best you ever had? They said they love you, then they throw you in the trash. Shook me in the eyes and tell me everything they can. Hey now, what's good? It's your girl, Jana Blackwell, C-Town Records, Mistress of Soul, and you're on the air with the hottest independent station, Indy Fire, with your host, Nakia, giving you that heat right here on the station, bringing you all of the hottest hip-hop hits, Indy Fire. Thank you, Jana. If you're just tuning in, you're live right here on Two It Tuesdays with your girl, Nakia, on Indy Fire, my special guest. Singer and songwriter Diamond the Diva. Yo, that was uh, Look Me in the Eye. You know what? I lied. I tend to do that every now and again. I had heard that before. I, I had. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, real life experience. All right. So, you know what? I have perfected the, the art of, you know, because my mother told me when I was younger, you know, if you can't look somebody, you know, exactly what you said, if you can't look somebody in, the eyes when you're talking to them, you know, that does show that you're, you know, you're not telling the truth, that you're lying. So mm-hmm. that has been something that I've perfected over the years, you know, being able to look somebody in their lives. I mean, I'm sorry, look somebody in their <laughs> eyes, <laughs> straight up lie to them and straight up lie to them, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay, that, I'm, I'm, that wasn't nice, you know, but no, um, <laughs> that is something that, <laughs> that is something that I think that, that is something in the in the professional industry, you know, or, or in corporate America. Um, that is something that I feel a lot of people have issues with. You know, they can't talk to you face-to-face. It intimidates mm-hmm. a lot of people um, that mm-hmm. you're able to stare them down and just talk to them. But it's a craft that I, I suspected a long time ago, being able to, um, and I'm sitting here doing it now, you look in the mirror and talk to yourself, hold conversations with yourself. I'm an only child. So I spent a lot of time doing that, just talking to myself in the mirror. And it helped me, mm-hmm. you know, growing up, you know, as an adult, it helped me. And so networking events, you know, I, I knock those out because I'm just able to just, you know, and, and then sometimes it doesn't work because I stare at people. They're talking to me and then I go off and left field just staring because, um, you know, that eye-to-eye contact, it helps. Try it every now and again. Stare, stare. You know, build confidence too. Build confidence, yes. But again, that was look me in the eye, Diamond the Diva. And so, yes. what's a typical day like for you? What's a typical day like for you? You're balancing college, you're balancing, you know, working, um, you're, you're balancing, you know, writing new music. Those are that track and the the next one that I'm going to play released in September. So I know you got some new music coming. We're in the fourth quarter. You know, you got a, what, a month and a half left? You got music that's going to re- drop before December? Mm-hmm. Definitely do. You see what I'm saying? I'm with you. what I'm saying? So how do you balance <laughs> all of that? Well, a typical day for Diamond and Steve is I wake up, I greet my dogs, <laughs> Then I start getting ready oh, for Oh, they were so cute for Halloween. I know, right? I bought them costumes <laughs> and they actually wore it. And they were my excuse <laughs> to go outside and trick or treat. <laughs> <laughs> they're like my little daughters, but they're crazy. No, not daughters, like best friends. They're my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, I'll greet them because normally they like to sleep in my room nowadays. I'll get ready for school. I'll go to school, continue my school day. In between my gaps, 
I'll go. I'm an intern at the senator's office right now. So in between my classes, I'll go to work and then go to class. And then I'll come home and I'll normally I'll like work on my music because I'll do my homework in between classes as well or whenever I can. Like college is different. You don't have to do homework every day. So that helps. Right. Um, but I'll work on like whatever I have to do, whatever I feel like doing. Like I can't force working on music, but if I if I'm not inspired to work on music, I'll work on something um like business wise, like oh marketing mm-hmm. or or finding a new gig or something, or networking, because you can always network, always network right. online or in person. So, like, networking never stops. So I'll do that in my free time when I get home, or and I'll chill, eat, do all that, but I'm a good multitasker, so I'll do that. Um, that's typically on my Tuesdays and Thursdays, my most busy days. And then my Mondays and Wednesdays, I'll go to school, regular morning routine, then afterwards I'll go to my other intern job uh, in the city at Hip Hop My Way, where I'm a brand ambassador there, and I'll get to network again and work with more people that have a closer hand in the music industry. Awesome. Your your life sounds as hectic as mine, and you're only 18. (laughs) Ooh. Ooh. Right, so or something. Well, chill. <laughs> yes, you, you mentioned you mentioned networking, um, and opportunities to you know um, seek out gigs or whatever. So I know that you had the um, the event on Sunday, Coast to Coast Live in Brooklyn. Yes. Mhm. Talk about it. How was it? I mean, I already. Know, I'm actually uh... <laughs> gonna be making a YouTube video on it. <laughs> like a little chit chat because it's like it's very it was a lot it's, it was a lot I'm not gonna lie <laughs> but a brief so know, is the actually, process still the same like did you still have to submit your song yeah you have to, to submit like, choose you yeah mm-hmm. so basically and then what I um hmm? and then what happened Okay, so yeah, I submitted my song. They chose me, um, and a couple of other other artists. It was about forty of us there. You have to, you have to pay for your slot. Like mm-hmm. most performances right. nowadays, you have to pay for your slot. Which uh, tip to other artists out there: just know it takes money to make money. So <laughs> that's one. So I had to sell tickets. I was selling tickets for about. Um, a couple of weeks. Um, I sold enough tickets to secure my slot, and um, I got there. Um, and it was a little bit. How do I say? It was a little ghetto at first, but it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay because, like, listen, I'm a little bougie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bougie. And so was my family and my friends, and I had my friends come from, I had one friend come from Howard, and my other friend came from another state. I had friends coming from different colleges coming, my family coming this late at night. It was very hectic, um, checking in and everything. But when I performed, it was just like a, like a weight lifted off my shoulder, and everybody there was super hyped. The judges were cool, and they were giving advice, and that's what I love. Like, so all in all, it was like a great, like a good outcome for myself. Yeah. Even though the yeah. event itself was like different, but each event yeah. is not perfect. You know, <laughs> each event is not perfect, and I'm just starting to know what I like in an event. Like each artist has their different um surroundings they prefer. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. But it was definitely great for, like, networking and a great opportunity for me. Like, I have no regrets at all. Like, it was super fun. My grandma was lit. My family was lit. We didn't make it a bad experience at all. <laughs> and all my friends and family came to support, and it was just nice. I came in fifth place. So with that comes a couple of prizes. Um, I have the opportunity to move on to the championship next 
year in 2020 to compete for $50,000. And, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. So I, I see that Coast to Coast hasn't changed any. If you use the word ghetto, then you, that that means they haven't changed a lot. Um, the experience <laughs> is, is what matters, though. Um, the exposure, mm-hmm. the fact that you were able to get your name out there, um, and the fact that you 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 can take away and say that um, all in all, you know, I still was able to have a good time. Um, and and I think the bottom line, you know, is an artist that is just starting out, you know, to be able to place fifth, you said out of about forty, um, that is good that you can take the positive as well as the negative feedback, you know, and build upon it, you know, don't just sit on it and think, you know, nah, I'm I'm too good, you know, for that. Don't get the big head, you know, just because you play fifth, but you're able to take, you know, um, constructive criticism and build upon that. um, Exactly. It's always, it's always good, but also that you always, you all already know what your niche is, that you know what you like right now. Um, that you can say, I, I've done that. I don't want to do that no more. You know what I'm saying? Give me <laughs> exactly. places that, you know, meet this criteria right here. This is where I want to be at right here. You know, this is the type of crowd that I want to perform for. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that your family was there um, was also awesome, um, that they support you 100. You know, that that right there speaks, speaks volumes in itself. Um, I want to mm-hmm. jump into this next track before I run out of time. Uh, uh, yeah, because I'm having fun with you. So I want to jump into Pop Out. Yo, this is my favorite. I love this. <laughs> uh, is this the track that you perform? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my go-to right now. If you want to lead us into Pop Out? Yes, yeah, sir. So Pop Out is basically the song that you listen to when you're getting ready, when you're going to class. When you just feel like you're about to pop out somewhere, it's like a a motivational song for you to have self confidence. It's the song I listen to when I'm getting ready and I'm ready to pop out anywhere I go because everywhere I go is a fashion show. But <laughs> um, yeah, that's the song like that you... <laughs> no, but seriously, that's the song that has that gives I will hope gives you self confidence, especially as a female. But it could also go for like males. Um. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Here we are on Two Lit Tuesdays live on Indie Fire. This is Pop Out, a Diamond the Diva. Yeah.
Yes, that was Pop Out. Diamond the Diva right here on Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, this your girl, Indy. I mean, your God, I'm not Indy Fire. I'm Nakia. <laughs> and you're live yeah. on Indy Fire. Ooh. You know what? I got tongue tied for a minute because I had a guest who last week they called me Indy Fire the whole episode. And I thought to myself, like, how did you even get on the show? Like, most of the time, yeah. you got to get better to get on the show. You don't even know who you want to show with. You calling me the name of the show? Wow. All right. So, you got another caller. <laughs> you got another caller. <laughs> Let's see if we can get you on. Let's see who we got. You are live on Indie Fire with your girl, Nakia, and Diamond the Diva. Who do we have on the line? Yo, Savage. How you hey. doing, Nakia? What's going on? How you doing, Diamond? Is 21 Savage? You said 21 hey. Savage? Jay Savage, Jay Savage. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> What's going on? How you doing? Oh, no. This I'm is my good. husband. You said this your husband. I'm... This is my I'm father. A... Oh, oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, proud of you, baby. Say, wait a minute. I'm proud How you of you. Doing? I'm proud of you. I'm good. I'm at work right now, but I had to call in and, and send, show some love. Thank you, That's Daddy. That's what's up. That's what's up. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you for calling. I know well, y'all are proud of her. I'm proud of you, man. Keep doing it. Like I told you, keep writing, keep recording, and it's going to pop. You know it. You know it. Get it right. Right. You put in that work, put in that footwork. You know it, it'll take you a long way. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but y'all, I gotta go. Music. I gotta go. I gotta go back to work. But I'm, right. I'm, I'm definitely proud of you. I just want to let you know I'm proud of you. All right. Thank you, Daddy. You welcome. Thank you girl. for calling. Have a good night at work. You too, okay. Thank you. My father is also one of my influences. He was make, he was making music when I was young too, and introduced me to a different side of music. Yeah, my father too introduced me to music. Um, back in the seventies, uh, you know, I remember from I I don't know two three years old. You know, listening to the Ozzy Brothers, um, the Whispers, the OJs, you know, that's what mm-hmm. I grew up on. Um, and, you know, Silly Tools, you know, all of um, just all of that music was instilled in every part of my body. And um, I think that's when my, my passion for music just, just it just grew. It, it didn't really have mm-hmm. a choice. You know, and the older I got, you know, um, I started to, you know, develop a love for musical instruments, you know, the piano, right. all of the woodwind instruments. Um, I started to play on my mother's side of the family, everybody sings. And so that was in me anyway. You know, I shy away from it. You I want to sing. I sing as a, I, huh, girl, what? I sing as a hobby. <laughs> Um, as a hobby, because that's not like I found. Um, everybody has to find what it is that they're great at, what they're passionate mm-hmm. about, and they got to run with it in this industry, you know. And for me, this this radio presentation, you know what I'm saying, all of that, um, the behind mm-hmm. the scenes of the industry, that's where I fit in at, you know. Um, that's where my passion is, but um, yeah. My daughter singing this stuff. Don't tell nobody. But, uh, you know. It's not like we're live or nothing, ready. you know. You know what I'm saying? You know, just me and you. <laughs> um, but you know, when you have your family that, that rocks with you 150%, that is, that, you know, right, that right there can can elevate you to to levels that people within the industry can't, can't take you. Because it. Had, that it just puts something else in you that can push you. You know, you can knock down so many other mountains because I'm telling you, when you have um, people that don't have the support 
from from their family. They want the support from their family. They need the support from their family, but they don't have it. Mm-hmm. You you just I'm I'm telling you, you just don't. You'll learn. You'll be able to look at somebody else and see why are you so miserable. You know what I'm saying? And they look and they be mm-hmm. like, you know, but the family. You got your family. They rock with you 100. I got my boyfriend. I got my friend. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing like family. I'm telling you. You know, you, your family has left nothing but a huge smile. Like, my face hurts from smiling so much. <laughs> you don't know, care. I support you. But I do want to ask you this. You know, being a female in the industry, a young female in the industry, are you suffering any type of um, – resistance or skepticism from, you know, male counterparts or even um, older, you know, females who look at you like, what do you think you're doing? You know what I'm saying? You mentioned that, you know, you're mm-hmm. a little bougie, um, and they look at you and be like, you know, who you, who you who you think you are? You know, you're brand new. You're stepping on the scene, and you're doing this, and, you know, are they, they throwing shade at you already? They talking bad well, about you already? Not that I heard of, but honestly, Good. as far as females in the industry, um, a lot of the times females haven't, like, come to reach out to me. I do know a couple more females in the industry that are uh, more advanced than me or have been in it a little bit longer. Um, We're cool, but it's nothing like personal like I don't know them I don't know any of them personally I know a couple of people that are aspiring artists that I help and I talk to and like people like I would say like on my level because like I went to school with a lot of creative people you know a lot of artists a lot of aspiring artists that and my school is predominantly female so the (laughs) way I talk with them and but it's different because of the people that actually like in the industry right now is very different. Mm-hmm. As far as with guys, um, yeah, I have had a couple encounters. Um, a lot of them do work, you know, and like me in a um, more romantic attraction type of way. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I know how to handle it. <laughs> I'm pretty, Good. I know how to handle it. That's all I can say. <laughs> It's it's inevitable, you know, as a female in any yeah. field of work, you know. Do you have a um? I know you see the female mainstream artists that our mm-hmm. young girls um have as as representation right now. Um, you know, we have some on on different. You know, they're on different scales. You know, you have Nikki on one level and Cardi on one level, and then you have like Summer Walker, and you have her. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, you got Lauren Hill, you got Erica Badu. You have these females that you know our 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 young girls are are looking up to. When you right. see yourself five years from now, being a role model for other, you know young girls and aspiring young artists. Um, where do you see yourself on that scope? Do you see yourself, you know, as this Nikki or this Cardi um, that portrays, you know, how to um, use sex to, to sell everything? Or do you see yourself as a, a summer walker who, you know, I don't want you touching me because I got social anxiety or, or do you see mm-hmm. yourself as, you know, I'm a Lauren Hill type, right. um, you know, what, what do you see yourself five years from now? All right. Five years from now, I see myself as a diamond. <laughs> there you go. All the there females, you go. <laughs> right. I can't, all, as you're saying, like all of those females, they're very on, they're on different, um, Scales like you can't categorize them at all. They have all different personalities and different ways of going about their lives. Um, far as body image, like I'm okay with showing skin, but I don't show that much, and I'm okay with not showing skin. You know, I I can mm-hmm. do both. Um, I don't have social anxiety. I'm very outgoing, but 
I wouldn't say, um, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't say, like, I'm very, like, loud and in your face all the time. I can have a good time, though, you know. Um, I definitely say in five years from now, I will be a different type of influence on females. Today in life right now, I influence younger females and females that are my age around me now. So, like, I think I will be a pretty good influence on the youth in the coming years, yes. Awesome. If you could offer a piece of advice to an aspiring male or female artist who's listening right now, someone who's heard your music, they like what they hear, and they say, ooh, I sound just like her. You know what I'm saying? Um, someone mm-hmm. who feels that you they, they got the flavor just like you do, um, but they may be a little fearful. You know, they may be about the same age as you, maybe a little older. Um, but they right. still, they're a little, you know, apprehensive. They don't know the next step that they need to take, but they, they're passionate about their craft, and they, they really want to step out, and, and, you know, they think they could do this. What piece of advice right. would you offer that aspiring artist? All right. One, I would say watch and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I can help you out there and hit me up if you need help. If you well, cannot reach me, though, <laughs> I would say – Be consistent. That's what my mom always told me, and I'm just starting to do it now. Be consistent. Perfect your craft or develop develop it as you go. Mm -hmm. I will also say it takes money to make money. Mm -hmm. Because you you have to invest in yourself in order to continue in any industry at all, whether you want to be an entrepreneur or artist, or you can be an entrepreneur and artist, but Anything you need, it takes money to make money. You have to pay for studio time. You have to pay for Thanks. distributions and everything you have to pay for. Like, it's hard. So you need money to make money. Perfect your craft, network. And what was the other thing I said? Oh, be consistent. Be consistent. Mm-hmm. There you go. And definitely be yourself. But if you're a younger artist, it's okay if you're still figuring out yourself, too. It is one thing to possess knowledge, um, but to have wisdom is an amazing thing. This young lady possesses both. She's very knowledgeable, and she has an unsurmountable um, just so much wisdom. So I big up to have Karen <laughs> for that right Thank there. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yes, 18 years old, you know. Um, I say to to the youth all the time, you know, you could have, uh, to break it down for them, you can have, you know, a lot of common sense, no book sense, or you can have book sense, no common sense, you know, to get on that level. But, yeah, she possesses both the wisdom and the knowledge. So, again, shout out to her parents. I thank you so much uh, for being here with me this evening, uh, Diamond the Diva. I want to go ahead and open up the floor thank to you now you. so that you can get oh, you are so very welcome. All of your contact information out to our listening audience, those who may be listening live now or those who may be uh, listening, you know, tomorrow on one of the many playback shows. The floor is now yours to get all of your contact information out now. Okay. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, at Diamond the Diva. If you want to follow me along this journey, if you're an aspiring artist, and you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Diamond Thy Diva. That's Diamond, D-I-A-M-O-N-D, T-H-Y, Diva. That's pretty much it. <laughs> there you have it. Simple. So, guys, um, stop back by right here. Two, Thursday? Thursday. Today's Tuesday? Yeah. Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I I don't know who the guest is. Um, I'm sorry. I I don't have the calendar. And we had to do (laughs) some several name changes on the calendar. (laughs) So uh, shoot the messenger. My bad. 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right back here. And then on next Monday, we close out the month of November um, with New Music Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Tuesday, to lit Tuesdays with Lady Sasa at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. No show on next Thursday because it's 
Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> next Tuesday will be the last show. All right, make sure you reach out to Sean Wilson, Coco Vita Coquito, to get that Coquito for your uh, Friendsgiving and for your Christmas festivities. All right? So uh, until Thursday at 6.30, again, Diamond, the diva, thank you so much for being here. Y'all make sure you Thank you for having uh, me. Downloading her music available on all digital platforms. Yes. Do you have any events coming up? No, actually, I don't. But, like, again, follow me on my Instagram and my Twitter, and you can find out about them. I don't have any events coming up, but look out for new music coming up in December. There you go. And we'll have it right here. It'll be in rotation in the month of December. All right, guys? So until Thursday. Thank you for having me. You are so very welcome. You guys have a good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you.